All right, what is going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan battle video. So as you guys know, Global got a data download last night after the maintenance. And I think the main thing or possibly the only thing people cared about at the time was the Fizz Vegito Blue Extreme Z Awakening, which is totally understandable because I was the exact same way. I literally didn't look at anything else until after I had done the grind for his event, filmed my showcase, found out exactly how just crazy OP, how insanely busted they made him. If you guys haven't seen the showcase yet, definitely go watch it after this video because it was freaking awesome. But uh, on top of the Fizz Vegito Blue stuff from the data download, we actually were able to learn a lot of new things about the next global campaign as well that's starting in the beginning of March. So in this video, we're going to go over all that additional information and uh, just take a look at what we can expect over the next few weeks on global. All right, so without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. And as far as uh, new characters go, we're getting three of them. The first one, of course, is the main uh, man right here, the STR transforming cooler. He is absolutely amazing. And if you think about it, after getting the Fizz Vegito Blue Extreme Z Awakening, which now makes him one of, if not the best TURs in the entire game, we're also going to be getting another guy that is widely considered to be the best TUR in the game as well. So two of the top TURs in the entire game coming to global within a week. Pretty freaking awesome. And uh, we're also going to be getting a new Fizz Thouser or Cooler's Armored Squad. And that's going to be just the non Dokkan FS unit that's going to be part of the banner with Cooler. And we're also going to be getting a new free to play tech Cooler who's going to be farmable through the revamped Cooler story event. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. So, these three characters, let's start with the Cooler here. If you guys already know what he does, then feel free to skip ahead maybe a minute, minute and a half and uh, we'll talk about the Thouser and some other stuff too. So this guy is a dual category leader and this category, Terrifying Conquerors, was actually originally called Conquest of Terror. And if I'm being completely honest, I think Conquest of Terror sounds a lot better than Terrifying Conquerors. I mean, of course the meaning is basically the same, but Terrifying Conquerors, just, it just doesn't have the same ring to it as Conquest of Terror, in my opinion. Anyways. Terrifying Conquerors or Transformation Boost Category Key plus 3, HP plus 130%, Attack and Defense plus 170%, Super Attack causes immense damage and lowers Attack and Defense, and his passive is Attack and Defense plus 100%, Transformation Boost Category Allies Key plus 2, Attack and Defense plus 30% when facing only one enemy, and Terrifying Conquerors Category Allies Key plus 2, Attack and Defense plus 50% when facing two or more enemies, his active skill uh, is a transformation into Final Form Cooler, and it can be activated when there is a Pure Saiyans or Hybrid Saiyans category enemy starting from the third turn from the start of battle, or when facing only one enemy starting from the sixth turn from the start of battle, of course, once only. His links are Strongest Clan in Space, Thirst for Conquest, Big Bad Bosses, Brutal Beatdown, Metamorphosis, Universe's Most Malevolent, and Fierce Battle. And his categories are Movie Bosses, Transformation Boost, Wicked Bloodline, Terrifying Conquerors, his new category, and also Last Resort and Target Goku, both of which are not going to be available on Global at the, at the moment because Target Goku is the Fusion or Super Android 13's leader skill. And last resort, of course, is the uh, LR Vegito Blue and LR Blue Gogeta's leader skills, all right? So once he transforms, his new super attack is Death Gliding raises attack and causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense. And his passive is Key plus three, attack and defense plus 180%, launches an additional attack, that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack and performs a guaranteed critical hit when there is a pure Saiyans or hybrid Saiyans category enemy. And everything else basically stays the same. Absolutely, absolutely ridiculous unit. Um, in my opinion, a must summon, but that's just me. If you guys are, you know, not too high on Cooler as a unit or as a character, I understand, but uh, I think he's too dope to, to skip for sure. So there's the Cooler. And now the Thouser. 
is actually very good himself. So Terrifying Conquerors, Category K plus 3, HP, Attack and Defense plus 100, plus 170, sorry, no, 120%, I wish it was 170%, 120%, and his super attack causes supreme damage and lowers attack and defense. His passive is attack and defense plus 30%, Per Terrifying Conquerors category ally on the team. So if you're running a full team of Terrifying Conquerors units, then they're getting an attack and defense buff of 210%, which is pretty freaking crazy. Hold on. 7 times 30. Yes, 210%. The math checks out. And like I said, that's pretty wild, man. And on top of that, they also launched two additional attacks, each of which has a rare chance, which is a 15% chance of becoming a super attack when there's an ally on the team whose name includes Cooler, but not Cooler's Armored Squadron or Armored Squad on the team. So in theory, if you give them some hidden potential investment, they can launch up to four supers in a turn if you get really lucky. So yeah, like I said, this unit has the potential to be really, really good and their links are coolers armored squad coolers underling loyalty cold judgment shocking speed brainiacs and fierce battle and the categories are joint forces terrifying conquerors and target goku so uh yeah there you go that is the fizz uh, Thouser or Cooler's Armored Squad that's coming with the banner as well. And if you happen to pull him, you definitely should not be upset because, as I said, it is a very, very solid unit. Now we're going to move on to the next thing on the list, which is actually a series of Extreme Z Awakenings for three very, very old units that desperately needed them. Um, unfortunately, none of these Awakenings are really that hype, but... I think for newer players, it does make them a lot more viable, a lot more usable. So we're going to start here with the AGL um, Super Saiyan Goku, Leaping Ever Higher Super Saiyan Goku. Post Extreme Z Awakening, his leader skill is going to be all types, key plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 40%. Super attack is instant transmission Kamehameha, causes supreme damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. And his passive is anger management, attack and defense plus 77%. Key plus 7 plus an additional attack and defense plus 77% when HP is 77% or less. I mean, attack and defense plus 77% by itself is really not that impressive, but if you fall below 77% HP, which is not that hard to do, then you're looking at what, 154% attack and defense in addition to a guaranteed super with that 7 key. So, yeah, definitely a very solid Extreme Z Awakening. And that's pretty much all there is to know about this guy. One other thing actually that you might be sad to hear is that it's not going to be an Extreme Z battle for these three Awakenings, but rather an Extreme Z area, which I know most people are very negative on. I'm like personally kind of in the middle. I don't really hate it, but I don't love it either. I'm just kind of neutral, but obviously I would always prefer an Extreme Z battle if possible, right? Now moving on to the next unit getting an EZA with this batch, and it is the Int Super Saiyan Youth Gohan, or Troll Han, as he's so lovingly named. And his leader skill is all types, keep plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 40%. Super attack greatly raises the defense for one turn and causes supreme damage to the enemy. And his passive is key plus 4, attack and defense plus 70%, plus an additional attack plus 70% when there is an ally whose name includes Goku, but not youth, Captain Ginyu, Junior, etc. attacking in the same turn. And that's pretty much all there is to know about this guy. Once again, just like the Goku, a huge, huge upgrade, but nothing too exciting. And next up is the Fizz Piccolo. Now, of course, we already have a Fizz Piccolo in the game that is significantly better, but once again, for newer players, this will be a good upgrade. His leader skill is going to be all types, key plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 40%, and his super attack is supreme damage and greatly lowers defense, and his passive is all allies, defense plus 77%, key plus 1, and attack plus 20%, her bond of master and disciple category ally on the team. So if you're running a full team of bond and master and disciple, that's key plus seven and attack plus 140%, which is actually very good. In fact, I would say that Piccolo might be 
the best of the three units that are getting Extreme Z Awakenings, um, which is really sad because obviously if you have the Dokkan Fest Piccolo, there's no way you're going to be running this guy over the Dokkan Fest one. So once again, he's not going to get a lot of use. But um, at the very least, they're trying to make these old units relevant again, right? So I can't really complain about that. Next up, we have the revamped story event for um, the Cooler movie. And there's an increased drop category now, which is, of course, Wicked Bloodline. Actually, I guess they could have made it the Terrifying Conquerors, but that would... Actually, that would probably piss a lot of people off because that would force you to summon for the new unit, right? So I'm glad it's Wicked Bloodline. And uh, we got the new tech cooler here. Of course, the event will get reset so that everybody who cleared it before can re-clear it for all the free stones. And in total, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 stones from the levels. And then an additional 3 stones. So 17 stones total from this story event. And is there anything else interesting as far as drops go? I don't really think so. I mean, aside from the tech cooler. Okay, so moving on to the tech cooler himself. He doesn't have an extreme Z, or sorry, a Tokon Awakening, but he's actually a very, very good support unit for the Terrifying Conquerors category. So his leader skill is Terrifying Conquerors, key plus two, HP, attack and defense plus 30%, uh, super attack raises defense, infinite stacking here so he's actually viable for the legendary goku event and causes supreme damage to enemy and his passive is, is attack and defense plus 40 percent terrifying conquerors category allies key plus two attack and defense plus 30 percent and his links are strongest client in space thirst for conquest cold judgment brutal beatdown metamorphosis nightmare and his categories are movie bosses transformation boost wicked bloodline terrifying conquerors and target goku and there is really nothing else to know about this guy except for the fact that he can be used, of course, to raise the super attack of other coolers in the game, like the new STR Dokkan Fest cooler. And lastly, uh, we just have the return of a few story events. So all three of the uh, Dragon Ball movie story events are coming back, and also we're getting the Metal Cooler story event back as well. There could be some other ones that are coming with the celebration, but uh, these are the ones that we currently know about. And I think that about does it guys for today's video. This is all the information we were able to get from last night's data download as it pertains to the next campaign or celebration on Global, which is starting specifically on March 2nd, 2020. And since today is February 25th, and this year is a leap year, so there is a 29th as well. That means we are exactly six days away from the beginning of the next campaign or celebration on Global. And that pretty much does it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something along the way. And as always, if you liked the video today, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you'll like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it, I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.